Hello and welcome. This is a short demo of our fitted mesh support in Avastar 1.6. This video is made with Blender 2.75, and I use the Avastar 1.6 alpha release from the 19th of June 2015, update 39. First, I create a new default Avastar character. And here, I use the append function to load my working model from a separate blend file, which contains a simple dress in this case. This dress has already been skinned, and it contains a set of weight maps, which have been made for a subset of the well-known 26 classic second life bones. So, let's proceed by selecting the armature, and then shift select the dress. Now proceed by opening the tool shelf. Then open the Avastar tab, and navigate to the skinning panel. So, I already mentioned that our mesh contains weight groups, and when we bind the mesh to the armature, then we want to preserve these groups. In order to make this possible, we have added the Keep Weights option. When this option is enabled, then all currently existing weight maps will be kept as they are, which is exactly what we want in this case. Please also ensure that the Attach Sliders option is enabled. This setting allows you later to test your mesh in Blender by using the Avastar Appearance Sliders. We get back to this in a minute. First let's bind the dress to the armature, simply by pressing the button, Bind to Armature. Now the dress is ready for posing and animating. But note, the weight maps still refer to the classic second life bones, and thus we still do not have a fitted mesh. So let's close the skinning panel and do some quick preparations. Take care that the dress is still selected, then open the rigging panel. In the bone visibility section select the skin preset. Disable the limits indicators. And enable stick mode. Ensure that the deform bones button is selected, and select the map filter from below the button. This displays only the weight of deformed bones. This setting keeps your view clean and organized. Now close the rigging panel and open the fitting panel. By the way we have taken care to keep all related buttons close to each other. Because of that you probably can keep most panels closed and only have one or two panels open at any time. Ok, back to the fitting panel. Here, you find two presets for fully classic mesh, and for fully fitted mesh. The fastest way to get your fitted mesh is to just select the fully fitted preset. This preset automatically propagates all existing weight maps to their corresponding fitted mesh counterparts. Now you see how all weight maps have changed their names, so in the 3D view you now see only fitted mesh bones. So in principle you are done with your fitted mesh project. However, there is a caveat. That is, your mesh weights most probably do not work nicely out of the box. Thus you must be prepared to add some work into tweaking the weight maps. Ok, now since we are warned, let's take a look at how the appearance sliders actually influence the mesh. Open the avatar appearance panel. But note, this panel is sometimes not initialized. If this is the case for you, then you see a button labeled with load appearance sliders. Pressing this button loads the sliders and removes the load button. The sliders are organized into sections. And one of the sections is dedicated to fitted mesh. Let's open this section. And now test how the mesh reacts on the belly slider. We see that while increasing the belly slider, the dress deforms more and more into an ugly shape. 
This distortion is caused by the weights in your weight maps. In fact the weights on the collision volume bones are used to control the mesh shape, but we just have blindly moved the weights from the second life base bones to the collision volumes, and thus we get a somewhat arbitrary shape as a result. Now let's check the weighting of our model in a little bit more detail. Step into the fitting panel. Enable the option, apply immediately. Then select the pelvis slider, and move it a bit to the left. You see that as soon as the slider value is smaller than 1, the blue second life pelvis bone appears. Also the colors of the weight map change more and more towards blue, when we move the slider further to the left, and the influence on the mesh gets smaller and smaller. Finally we see the fitted mesh pelvis bone disappears as soon as the slider value is set to zero. At the same time the pelvis weight map has turned completely to blue. Now let's also turn the belly slider to zero, until the belly bone fully disappears. Now our mesh is no longer influenced by the belly appearance slider. However, when we select the blue second life bones, we see the weights have been dropped to them. So actually the fitting sliders just distribute the weights between the blue second life base bone, and its orange fitted mesh counterpart. And the more weight the fitted mesh bone gets, the more it influences the mesh shape. So all we need to do is finding the best matching distribution for the weights. Let's adjust the sliders in side view a bit. Well, we see quickly that using the sliders alone helps a bit, but we are still far away from a good solution. And here Avastar provides three new features for you. The first and the most important feature is the tool, Adjust to Shape. This tool actually helps us to optimize the weights to our likes. However this tool makes heavy usage of shape keys, and we will see shortly why this is beneficial. Here is the demo. First, create a new corrective shape key. Give this shape key a reasonable name, belly for example. Then step into edit mode and modify the mesh to your likes. In our case we will just smooth the mesh a bit. When we are satisfied with the new shape, finalize the corrective shape key, and step back to weight paint mode. Now do a quick check to see how the mesh distorts, when you disable your new shape key. Then while the shape key is fully active, select the tool, adjust to shape. And now test how the mesh behaves, when you slide the shape key value to zero. You see the shape behaves much nicer now, although it is not yet optimal. Let's step down to the belly size slider and see how the mesh reacts. Again we see it behaves much smoother now than before. The huge distortions are gone and only some small issues remain. Now we can decide to propagate the shape key directly to the mesh. This is done as follows. Move the shape key to maximum influence. Also move the belly appearance slider to maximum influence. Then scroll down in the appearance slider panel, and call the function, bake to mesh. This function propagates the shape key into the mesh and it deletes the shape key. 
The resulting mesh matches perfectly to a shape with the belly size set to its maximum. However, when we move the belly appearance slider towards zero, we see that now some distortions appear. So we see that in this case we cannot create one mesh that fits all belly size sliders equally well. Hence we might want to create two variants of the mesh, one which fits small to medium belly sizes, and another one that fits medium to huge belly sizes. And here is a nice little trick that can make a huge difference and speed up your development significantly. Press the Ctrl Z button a few times until the shape key is back. Now here is a bit of magic. Select the upper avastar body. In the shape key section search for the belly shape key. Cut the name of this shape key by using Ctrl C. Then select your mesh again. And paste the shape key name into the belly shape key name. Now open the skinning panel. In the appearance control section select, no sliders. Then select, shape keys. Now step into the shape key list, and ensure that your belly shape key uses the bone morph shape key as basis. Now move the belly appearance slider again. You can set your appearance sliders now to whatever configuration you like, then export your mesh for this shape. Thus you can create arbitrary standard sizes in a snap. Well, of course in reality things are a bit more complicated. In this demo we have optimized only for the belly slider. But we actually want to optimize for other sliders as well. So in practice you still have a lot of detail work to do and test a lot before you can provide a very good fitted mesh. But the Avastar tools should give you a lot of help to achieve your goals. I know that this is by far not a complete tutorial, and the entire fitting panel is not yet fully finished, so you may expect a few more simplifications before we go to release. But you already can see things are getting smart by now. Have a nice day, and hope to see you again soon.